Why, hello there, everybody. How are you doing today? It's me again and again. I'm here to bring you yet another update on my situation, and well, today's update is the same update as all previous updates. My phone has not gone one ringy dingy yet, because it's going to. Now, today's date is February 20th, 2019, is the date that I'm recording this video. And in today's video, we are going to talk about means, motive, opportunity, intent, as well as burden of proof. But before we get into that, I just want to tell you this. As far as my situation is concerned, I'm not upset. I'm not mad at anyone, including the criminals who are currently still doing this to me. My entire life has been stolen from me. I, am, I have been kidnapped and I'm continuing to be held hostage. Hostage to what? Well, their lies. Hostage to this. Hostage to that. And again, in the description of the video, there's a link to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, and I have my name as well as Vincent Lolly's name listed. Please search those two names and you'll see there's no record of me ever committing this. And what you were about to see today is that the only reason why that's there is, be, is, is to drive me out of this city. Now, I, I do not ask anyone to do anything for me. I don't. I do not. Whenever somebody says somebody needs to do something, here's what you need to understand. No one, no one can make anyone do something that they do not want to do. Let me say that again. No one can make anyone do anything that they do not want to do because we all can say no because we all have a free will the o the only thing that you have to decide as an individual is how much pressure are you willing to take because we can clearly see all the fakes the frauds the counterfeits all the bullies that are out there all the control freaks, we see them. You know who they are. In fact, you may start to be, re you may start realizing that you are a control freak. Now, imagine walking around with this on your life, on your record. Now, imagine not knowing about it. That is a very powerful thing to be used against you. Because, well, he's a bad person, so. Get, get away from here. Get away from me. That's why I say it's put on there to drive me out of the city. And you will see this very clearly. Clear as a bell. Now, how do I live my life? Why am I not demanding that these people do anything? Because, well, the people that I've been dealing with, all I'm doing is reporting crimes. Okay? That's it. That's all I've been doing. And, and I'm doing it because Almighty God showed me these crimes, what, what is being done to me. I live my life according to the Word of God. I don't care what you do. I don't care. I mean, I care. I want you to go to heaven. But you, I can't make you do the right thing. 
And the reason if I try to do that, then what I'm doing is I've just become what I despise. Look at that light bulb's coming on. The only person that I have to give an account for is me. That's it. James 4, verse 17. This is how I live my life. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Now, I have been told, I've been shown, not only what's been done to me, but what it, because they all stop being law enforcement attorneys, judges, and everything, it's also affected other people's lives. It's affecting you. Because a lot of you all, even though you won't admit it, you're scared. I'm not scared. You are convinced that these people can come in and do bad things to you. You are afraid that they're going to come in and shame you, try to threaten you, try to bully you. Well, if that does happen, especially if it happens with somebody, by someone who has a title, be it a ministerial title, uh-oh, a law enforcement title, a legal title, you know, like a judge, an attorney, or some for, so forth. Just know that you're not dealing with the genuine article. They are a fake and a fraud and a counterfeit. Okay? Period. Because Almighty God doesn't force you to do anything. So, why? how is this affecting you? Well, there's plenty of you all. The devil will say, you know what? He's just running, he's just flat, he's just trying to throw a guilt trip on you. Now, I'm not trying to throw in a guilt trip on anybody. I'm telling the truth. So, you just need to get rid of him. He, you need to come up with a reason. You know what? He just doesn't want to work. You don't know how many people have, to, have said that to me? You just don't want to work. A job is not going to remove this from my record. A job is not going to give me back 21 years of my life. The only way to remove this from my record is for the law to be applied. But because I'm a doer, because I'm doing what Almighty God said to do, I'm doing what I know, again, James 4.17. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. In other words, God showed me this. God showed me how many people this, this has affected. That's you. That's you. Some of you all are petrified. Some of you all are coming up with any and all reasons to not do. Not only anything about me, because some of you all don't even know me, but to do something about what's going on in our country. And you're upset that there are others just like me, you know, the 45 President Donald John Trump, he's doing, and I said it years ago, you're going to be, you, you're going to start attacking a man because he's doing something that you all pontificated, look the word up if you don't want know what that means, pontificated that it will never happen. Nothing can be done about it. Yet, you look around and there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of things happening. Stop if you, if you, as an individual, give your free will, give your authority to another individual asking permission to do something then what you've just become is, you've just willingly become a slave. 
Look at that light bulb's coming on. I'm no slave. It, and again, this is this is a bad thing. This is this this is affecting you. It's because it's causing you to doubt God. Because there are some Christians who say who say some professing Christians who say, well, if if that if, if, if God's God's just going to have to come in and do something about it. No, you see, God does not work for you. God works through you. How about that? Let that sink in. You know, some of these people post, the Holy Spirit invaded the White House. That's a joke. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He doesn't go where he's not wanted. Almighty God doesn't force you to do anything. And then there are others yet that, that you know, the, the Job friends... Well, you must have done something wrong. This is all your fault, Kerry. You shouldn't have called the ad. Well, if it was wrong for me to call, then that means it was wrong for them to, oh, look at that, light bulb's coming on, place the ad. There is no such thing as criminal solicitation of prostitution. And you're waking up and you're realizing it. A lot of our laws are not lawful laws. They're there just to control you. So again, imagine walking around with this, you can make man. You gonna you, look? You can't. You can't do this. You can't do that. But you will let you. You know, go mow grass. We'll let you pick up cans. We'll let you work at a fast food restaurant. You know, but mm, no, you can't. No, see, that's we. You're a threat to society when there's absolutely no record of this going on. So that is, this is a temptation because we all, if we're all serious and we're all honest with each other, we all, all of us, want to, want to control something or someone, mainly because we want control of our own lives. But if you believe that there's somebody in charge, then it's a paradoxical situation Look at that light bulb's coming on. Because you can't control your own life because you believe that there's somebody above you in charge. No. Almighty God's in charge. The law is in charge. Okay? So, all I want is my life back. Period. That's it. And the only way to get my life back is to remove this. And the only way for this to be removed is for the law to be applied because this is a crime. And it's not only affecting me, it's affecting you. And now you see it. But I digress. Now, let's talk about means, motive, and opportunity as well as intent and burden of proof. Now, a lot of you, you all, anybody that's watched several of my videos, or any of my videos, you've seen, you've seen me hold this up. Okay? Um, but what you haven't seen, and what I haven't shown you, is the copy that's in, in the um, circuit court case. This is this is the copy. And now, instead, I want you to notice something here. The witnesses have all been redacted. Okay? And this is the state attorney's office copy when it should say the clerk's copy. Okay? And you can see here it's the very same thing. Or is it? Is it the very same thing? Is it? I'm going to do this. This way. Can you see it's different in shade? Right here? In here? No? Okay. Well, um, here, let me help you out with that then. If you can't see it different in shade, 
let me show you this one, which is the original copy that I got from the Jacksonville. Oh, oh, now you see it. Now you see it. Don't you? Yeah. Now you see it. See how all this is gray? And how all this is white? This is what happens every time you copy it, which is what this is. This is a copy of this one. Every time you copy some the original, it gets lighter. Until after about the second or third copy, it gets white. Okay? So that's 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 the difference. Okay? But now to show you to show you what a what it should look like. We're going to use Vincent Lolly's arrest and booking reports. And we're going to compare it to this one. Okay? So, this is Vincent Lolly's arrest and booking reports. Okay? This is the first one. This is the second one. Please notice, same arrest and booking report number. Okay? Same arrest and booking report number. However, this one is for the two charges were grand theft and dealing in stolen property. Okay? The grand theft was not prosecuted but the dealing in stolen property was one arrest and booking report. Why? Two different types of crime. One is theft. Two different crimes, period. This happened years ago. Okay? The grand theft happened years ago, which is why they didn't prosecute it, but he was trying to sell what he had stolen, which is why it was prosecuted. And this one as you can clearly see, is possession of child pornography. Different statute. Now, so two arrest and booking reports. So why isn't mine two arrest and booking reports? Because it's two separate crimes. Or is it? No, it's not two it's not two separate crimes, it's a lie. Okay? But another thing I want you to notice is here you see uh, the arraignment date of twelve eighteen. See it? Twelve eighteen. But now according to the court record book, I was found guilty of soliciting for prostitution uh, on one six. How come that's not on here? How come there's no disposition? Because again, if we go back to Vincent's, he has a disposition. Right there. And what's the disposition? Adjudicated guilty of a felony, two years probation. That's it. Also, I want you to list here, here's his arraignment date. Right there. And then what does that say? That is, says, continued. These things aren't over and done with in a, in a, in a, a, at one second. So, if this was continued, same thing with here. Continued. Okay? If these two, if these two separate crimes were continued, then, um, where's the continuance? on this one. Oh, because this has never seen been in a court in a court. It's never been. It's never been in court. Meaning I have yet to have my day in court. My next question is why? Why does my arrest and booking report 
from 1997, why does it not have a disposition when this one does? Again. Again, this is this is my this is my original one. These two look a whole lot different and I got I got both of these from the same place. I got this this had to be faxed over to me right there from who? JSO Records. JSO Records. The date and time, time and date that it was faxed over. Where did it faxed over to where? To the, to the uh, jail, to the record room, because it was hiding, because I'm the one that turned the guy in. You don't believe me, okay? Here's the narrative section. See attached probable cause affidavit. My affidavit. I can't find it. I turned him in. I reported the crimes. I removed the threat. Okay? So, um, uh, why does his from 2000 have, a, have all the court dates and everything, but why was it hiding? It was hiding because, again, I turned him in. It was hiding at the off-site storage facility. Don't worry, we'll get we'll get into more of that later. Not in this video, though. So again, why is this original thing? Why did this all of a sudden stop right after the bond hearing? At the bond hearing is when they set the arraignment date. Why did it stop? Why did it say, oh, because I'm going to tell you why. Very simple. Because they realized this bond hearing happened on 12-4. They realized that afternoon when I was assigned a public defend, public no defender that they were prosecuting a kidnapping and they had all documented themselves. But let's stay, let's stay focused. Let's stay with the means, motive, opportunity, intent as well as burden of proof okay do you have the ability to report a a a, a, a file a false a false re police report yes you do you do you can make something up say that somebody did something and get the police over and file a report and everything but if you do that that's a third degree felony here in the state of Florida Okay. Do you have access to this document, which is called an arrest and booking report? No, you do not. Do you have the ability to fill out this arrest and booking report? No, you do not. Which means the only one who can write this is a police officer. And because this has never been been through the through the court because it's still down at the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office hiding without a uh, without a final disposition over 21 years later proves this is the beginning of the crime. So what was so they have the means. What was their motive? Well, their motive was. Again, they had harassed me, and then they had falsely detained slash imprisoned me, which, again, is a third-degree felony. Not a person, all six of them, because any of them could have stopped it. They were, re they were recorded. They had documented themselves. And I had reported to the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office twice their criminal actions. And the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office itself refused to do anything about them. Why? Because they knew what was going on. 
And now that I had the audacity to say that the Jacksonville Sheriff's officers, that these control freaks did anything, did something wrong, well, uh, I have to be removed because they are in control. They have the title. We're all criminals because they say we are criminals. So the motive for writing this was not to put destroy my life, was to, they had done something wrong. Their motive for writing this was to not have it prosecuted. Because again, there is no such thing as an attempted lewd lascivious upon a minor. It's impossible to attempt to commit something without actually committing something. And in order to solicit a minor to prostitute themselves, you kind of need a minor. And there is no victim. This was all reported by the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. And the... Uh, oh, see? Light bulbs. This narrative, which is over on the Tube U channel, I believe that the, the playlist is called uh, Releasing the Truth Lions or Unleashing the Truth Lions. I go over it. I'm not going to go over it again here. Okay? So, um, uh, their motive was to not have this thing prosecuted because they weren't able... I, ta I taught them the concept of no. I'm not going to bow down to somebody. I'm not going to admit that I was doing something, even though I was threatened. Because, folks, they, they falsely detained me and handcuffed me, put me in the back of a, of a squad car, and brought me over to a parking lot and had me sit there for another two and a half hours. According to this arrest and book report, supposedly... Uh, I was arrested at 2015, which is 8-15. 8-15 on December 3rd of any year is pitch black. So what they're saying is that they saw me in the black of night attempt a lewd lascivious uh, act upon a minor which cannot be done, and they saw me solicit a minor to prostitute themselves in the parking lot of the racetrack gas station, I guess, in the dark of night. So, they had no intention. And again, this is written, this does not describe me committing any kind of crime. It sounds real bad, but they, they can't, They the, let's go to burden of proof now. They have to prove that any of this happened. You must have a legal, lawful reason for the police officer to fill out an arrest and book report. And it's thereby making every line a third-degree felony. Because they can't, because what they found out was that this was a lie. Because the sting was being recorded, and I never did any of this. But the problem is, which again is why they wanted, this, why they wrote this the way that it was so that it wasn't prosecuted, but it was prosecuted. And that's their problem. It was prosecuted. Right there. So now let's quickly go through who else is hooked their little wagon to this falling star. Here. Finding of probable cause. Okay? This judge, who they redacted and then added another person. That's okay. We all, the, the court records have who this guy is. And it wasn't this guy. Here is the finding of probable cause to detain me for this that there is, there is the only, they didn't do their job. There's no victim. There is no such thing as an attempted lewd lascivious act upon a minor, and in order to solicit a minor to prostitute themselves, you kind of need a minor. They just rubber stamped everything. 
So this judge stopped being a judge December 4th. Okay? Then we have motion to set bond for what? Attempted lewd and lascivious on a minor, which, again, there is no such thing as an attempted lewd and lascivious act on a minor. And who signed it? What? Taggart. And A. Soul, whoever A. Soul is, they st Taggart stopped being a, a judge right then and there, and so did this person. This third person stopped being a state attorney. Okay? Then, well, here's what they're going to, here's their biggest problem. This is my invocation of constitutional rights, and they are scared to death of number five, but I signed it. So now, they're scared to death of number five, and I'll read it for you real quick. This invocation of rights shall not be deemed to have been waived by me unless an attorney has been provided to me, either retained or appointed, and I execute a written waiver of these rights signed by myself and my attorney in open court. Anyone violating this invocation of constitutional rights will be subject to legal action for sanctions and or damages. That's what scares them scared. Anyone violating this invocation of constitutional rights will be subject to legal action for sanctions and damages. In other words, because they let all of these crimes, this is a crime. That by not enforcing this, this is a crime. And again, this was signed on, it says right there, 12-4, uh, 12-4, 97. At my first appearance, then we have the affidavit of insolvency. And I want you to, in other words, I was issued a public no defender who never, who never represented me. They denied me counsel. Why? Because they, none of this should be happening. See this? 97, 97491929 number? Pay close attention to that. Okay? I'm going to put that on the side. Okay, so um, uh, now that I'm locked up with, 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 real, with real felons, and then the public no defender who was just out of, uh, right out of law school, she, they plop this on her desk and they tell her that, uh, hello, deal with this. This is a no-win situation. Until she comes up and says, excuse me. <laughs> um, I don't know if you all know this or not, but uh, there is no such thing as an attempted lewd lascivious act upon a minor. And in order to solicit a minor to prostitute themselves, uh, you kind of need a minor. You all kidnapped this guy. Now, she's got a choice. What does she do? She bows to them because she believes there's nothing she can do. Okay? So, now you've got a situation where you've got, we, we have six law enforcement officers, two of them are vice detectives, who have admitted, admitted that they have kidnapped me. And now, uh, because, again, this is a kidnapping, which is a first-degree felony. There is no statute of limitations on a first-degree felony, so there is no running out the clock. In fact... There is, because this has, because this was never dealt with then, the clock has never started. The clock has never started. You don't believe me? Watch this. Okay, so as you can see, we are on findlaw.com. And let's see what it says about Florida criminal statutes of limitations laws. And it says... Prosecutor, prosecutors have time limits called the statute of limitations for filing criminal charges against a suspect. These time limits vary by the severity of the crime, and there are no limits, no limits 
for certain violent crimes such as capital murder or <gasps> kid napping. States also have civil statutes of limitations which similarly limits the time of, in which a plaintiff may file a lawsuit or other civil complaint. These time limits ensure that evidence is preserved, justice is carried out effectively, and that potential defendants, in most cases, don't have the threat of criminal charges hanging over their heads indefinitely. You know, like what they are accusing me of, because that's all it is, is an accusation. But pay close attention to the next line. But keep in mind, the clock doesn't run if you are out of state or otherwise evading law enforcement. You know, if you are participating in a conspiracy to obstruct justice, meaning I can file these charges, these charges can be filed today, 21 years later, because they were never reported in 1997 because they would have been reporting themselves. Well, how about that? So let's recap real quick, hmm? shall we? What do we have? And now you really starting to understand why they're so scared. Now you're really starting to understand as to why this is on here, aren't you? But let's recap. What do we have? We have documentation of the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office by the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office filing a false arrest and booking report. They are the only ones that, that, that have the ability to write this out. And they are the only one, they are the ones who are filling it out, and the, which is means. The motive, why are they filling this out? Because they don't want to get fired. Because I've documented with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office twice. I've reported their crimes. I've reported their harassment. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office said, just don't answer my telephone. And then I reported the fact that they offered me a 14-year-old little girl. Again, Tube U Channel, releasing the truth lines or unleashing the truth lines is the playlist. Yes, it's long. It's impossible to go over all this in five minutes. So, they wrote, they filled this out, and here's the irony. The simple fact that I didn't bring forward any kind of charges back then proves, proves that I was trusting these, these supposed godly authorities because I'm a Christian. That's why. Okay? But had I not, well then, why didn't I, as soon as they dropped all the charges, why didn't I go run and get an attorney back in 1997 and say, oh my God, they scooped me up off the street. Because, well, I said, Lord, what do I do about this? And he said, don't do anything about it now. Just go on with your life. Future proves past. Now, isn't it? Because I had no idea that what was being done to me was unlawful. But you know who did? They did. So, and here's the, and again, here's the irony. If these six officers at the racetrack gas station, even after they ran at me with guns, either shotguns or assault rifles, again, Tube U Channel, uh, and, and, and handcuffed me and said all this vile stuff, even then, if they would have said, well, hold on a second, we're sorry, Mr. Nelson, we made a mistake. 
and let me go again. I would have I would have just said it's all right. I was just trying to make sure that you all were you know because uh, I trust I trusted God the godly authority. The simple fact that they wrote this out proves that they had something to hide because they were afraid that I was going to tip light bulbs coming on tell someone what they had done and the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office again knew about it because again I called them twice once to report that they kept calling my house and harassing me which is a third degree felony and the second was to report that they offered me a what I believe to be a 14 year old little girl both instances the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office said there was nothing that they could do about it and nothing that they would do about it again two view channels so they wrote this to save their jobs they wrote this to save the city of Jacksonville a whole bunch of money forget the law forget the Constitution because hello we have the badge we are in charge of you you are just a lowly criminal you are a lowly citizen no I'm a law-abiding citizen and I give the authority to the law it is because of my existence that the law is in existence you all are a bunch of criminals because criminals obviously do not want the law enforced which is why they're trying to they're trying to cover up their crimes so they write this thing and they say okay well it won't be prosecuted worst case scenario he spends the night in jail when already the damage has been done because well I get to call my mother from jail on her birthday to let her know about this how about that how about that let that sink in my entire I mean they went over to my well anyway to view channel so they they are on the hook and now not only now again I want there's been over one million there's millions upon millions of millions upon millions of of first degree and third degree felonies why how does that happen well all the felonies that happened on the phone call were recorded by the by the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office by the criminals that kept calling me because again the the law no law enforcement officer of any type of any level can call you up at the at your house at, can call you up simply to ask you to prom, to commit a crime okay they can't call you up just to see to, they cannot call you up to make sure that you're doing the right thing the only reason why they can call you is if you requested them to call you or for them to call you to give you an update on a crime that you yourself had reported okay so how do you get millions upon millions of felonies okay I wasn't kidnapped once I was kidnapped six times because all six of them allowed it okay so uh, every time that they wrote this arrest and booking report they are re kidnapping they are recommitting every previous crime as well as committing two third-degree felonies so you got so you got six and then the next guy does it is 12 so on and so forth okay that's just how the law works that's how you can get 500 you know uh, uh, 37 counts of this and 47 counts of that because as soon as the person uh, their crimes their initial crimes were repeated every single time somebody that was in a position to do something about it didn't do anything about it 
So they're all on the hook for kidnapping me. Which means that all of these uh, Jacksonville Sheriff's Officers that signed this, called checks and balances, they are doing nothing but falsely detaining me again, kidnapping me again, and they are committing two third-degree felonies with every signature all the way down the line. You see how quickly it builds up. So, you've got six JSO officers who are on the hook. Now you've got the, the judge that found probable cause to detain is on the hook. And uh, uh, um, uh, the uh, Taggart's on the hook because he didn't set a bond. He set a ransom because this is not, this is not, they're telling me I have to pay at least $2,500 to get to be released from their in prison, from their kidnapping. I've got to pay that ransom. I've at least got to pay $2,500. Because this is not a crime. They're the ones documenting it. And then, you know, you got the, uh, uh, the, the guy that uh, found uh, probable cause to detain, you got Taggart. They're on the line. And now, because I was ordered to a public no defender, now you've got the public defender's office. You've got Miss Yolanda Gibson. She, you hear the helicopter? Gee, I wonder who that is. You've got Yolanda Gibson on the line now. Okay? And who does she who does she report to? Oh, Mr. Charles Coffer. You know the very same. Well, we'll get to it. She reports to Charles Coffer. She goes to Charles Coffer and tells Charles Coffer, uh, "Excuse me, there is no such thing as an attempted lewd and lascivious act upon a minor, and there is no soliciting for prostitution of a minor. In order to solicit a, a minor to prostitute themselves, you kind of need a minor, and there is no minor anywhere listed here. So." Uh, you all kidnapped this guy. And not only did you all kidnap him, uh, that judge, the judge that found probable cause to detain, which again explains why it is redacted. Let me get it. Hold on. What explains why it is redacted. Here it is. It's why his name is redacted. Oh, and altering a court document, that's a felony too. And let's not forget, all of these fe felony case, ca felony court documents, they're not in the felony case file, they're in the misdemeanor case file. That's a felony as well. Okay? So, uh, but he stopped being a judge. Okay? And guess what? We're really screwed because he signed his, his affidavit. I mean, he, he signed his... Uh, in doc, uh, uh, invocation of his constitutional rights. So we are bound by the law as law enforcement officers, as officers of the court, as well as judges, as well as by state attorneys and public defenders. We are bound by the law to uphold and enforce the law. So what do they do? They seize the opportunity. They seize the opportunity. First, uh, they, um, well, they lie. Because they should all have been in prison. And they found out about it hours after filing the documents. And what are they going to do? Go to the, uh, go to the uh, uh, circuit, uh, clerk of the circuit court, and say, we need all of that, all of that documents back. Well, yeah, they could do that. They could destroy it. But wait a minute. That, that They still got me sitting in there. And remember, they've already told my family that I'm a sexual deviant. They've got to explain their actions. They need to keep me quiet. They've got to remove me because, again, if the truth ever comes out, they're going to go to prison. So... What do they do? I meet with Yolanda, y LaFonda, LaFonda Gibson. LaFonda Gibson. 
Again, I'm not going to go over it all. She has a cow. Met with her one time. She says, they can't do that, they can't do that, they can't do that, they can't do that. And I say, and yet, here I am. And she leaves and she says, let me see what I can do about this. What is she going to do about it? Absolutely nothing. Because she believes that there's somebody in charge. I, it, I'm just a lowly little citizen. Well, none of this would have happened, Kay, if you wouldn't have called the phone number. Well, guess what? I wouldn't have called the, their phone number had they not put the ad in the newspaper. And again, I was not arrested at my house. I was arrested at 4544 Atlantic Boulevard, which was then to which was then as it is today a racetrack gas station. No. They've got to no, they don't know what in the world to do. So what do they do? They leave me sit in jail violate, recommit, deny me counsel. I never saw y Yolanda Gibson. I never, again, I never heard from her again. I never heard from the public defender's office at all, again, ever, period. Why? Because if this 1218 court date is ever met, they are all going to prison the city of Jackson, the, the city of Jacksonville, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, all, all of these different entities are going to owe me a boatload of money. So we can't have all that. The judges like their job. No, no, no. We can't admit that we did that. We just rubber stamped everything. So they leave me sit in there for six days. So I say that's it. I had enough. We got to figure something out, is what they're saying. We got to figure something out because 1218 is coming. We already filed it. His family knows. We already given him a public defender. What are we going to do? So, what do I do? I get tired of waiting because Yolanda Gibson never, LaFonda Gibson rather. LaFonda Gibson never comes back. Nobody ever comes back. So I get to call up my landlord and say, I need that money that I've been paying for that property because I was buying a property. But this hasn't affected my life at all. No. No, not at all. And I said, I need it to bond out. Now bond out. And folks, this, this bond is still active. It has never been discharged. Never. And what is the court date? I'm supposed to appear on 12-18-1997. There is no record of any court date, pertain, any court action pertaining to 12-18 concerning me anywhere. Because they want this to, they want this all just to go away. So, but now they have a cow, because what did I bond out for? Attempted lewd and lascivious upon a minor and soliciting for prostitution of a minor. You're looking right at it. Now, it's their job, it is the bonding company's job to make sure that I show up in the court. Guess what? I bonded out on the 8th day, signed and sealed this 8th day of December. Okay? It was like 10, 11 o'clock at night. Okay? I never heard from these people. I never went back into that place again. And obviously, it was, it, which means if I don't show up to court, they're on this bonding company is on the hook for the money. But you know what? The, they said, you know what? Uh -uh. It, just forget about this. This is going to go away because we got all these judges involved. And now they seize the opportunity. So what do they do? I'm going to tell you what they do. I get out of jail, bond out on the 8th. I go to work on the 9th because I own my own, biz, uh, own my own lawn service. I go to work, and when I come home, there is a letter from the state attorney's office in my mailbox. And it didn't dawn on me then 
because I was overwhelmed with what it said. It said that all the charges, no need to retain counsel, all charges have been dropped. But because you're out on bond, we need you to come down to J1, which is the same court, it's the jailhouse courtroom. We need you to come down to J1 so that we can finalize this or whatever, you know, legally stuff. So I was excited. And so I went down there. They wanted me down there on Monday, December 15th. Monday, December 15th. So that's what I did. I went down there and Charles Coffer, that's the date of Charles Coffer impersonated a judge. Remember, in 1997, in December of 1997, Charles Coffer worked for the Public Defender's Office. Documented by the Public Defender's Office. But he impersonated a judge. More on that later. So now that they got me out of the way, what are they going to do? What exactly are they going to do now? Now I believe that all charges have been dropped. They threatened me. And again, I'm not going to go all over it all again. They threatened me and um, basically said, you know, uh, if, if we find out that you called up another escort service, we will revisit this again. Guess what? We're going to revisit this again. Because it has never been visited before. They lied. Again, the simple fact that they did all that, they are re-kidnapping me. They, they are never starting the clock on the original crime. And the original crime was the kidnapping by the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Okay? Then the kidnapping by the judge. It, they, it's not the crimes that were committed. It's who it is that's committing the crimes. Sound familiar to anyone? So what did they do? They rewrote the arrest and booking report. Is what they did. You don't believe me. Now, I went down to the clerk of the courts and did an arrest search for every arrest for soliciting for prostitution for the entire first week of December and here is the paid invoice for that it was done right as you can see right there on 10 17 2013 is when I did this okay and I paid thirty dollars and ninety cents for this information okay so what does it say it says here let me back out of it for a second what you're gonna see here is here's there were 10 arrests supposedly okay and this one is a female but well, I want you to pay close attention to these two right there okay because that's me right here okay case number 1998 wait a minute hold on a second hold on a second 1998, why does, that's the misdemeanor case files they have. They have a 1998 misdemeanor case file for a 1997 arrest. That's wrong. They have a 1998 uh, felony case file, that's what this one is, for a, 19, a supposed 1997 arrest. Now, what I want you to notice is here, the, we're looking right here, okay? It says right here, charge count. This is the one that they rewrote. This one is the one they rewrote it to be a one count, simply a soliciting for prostitution charge. Okay? This is the misdemeanor one. They, re they rewrote it. You're looking at it. Now, the second one, count the, with two counts, is the felony one. Notice the initial offense level is left blank because that's the one that they want to forget. Okay? You don't believe me? Okay, here it is. Arrest date. 12-3-1997. 12-3-1997. Right there. So, now, how can I prove that that's me? Well, the case numbers, for one, but if you just still don't believe me, you still don't believe me, let's go down here. Oh, oh hold on. It's up here. Here we go. Kerry Nelson. Kerry Nelson. 
I was adjudic supposedly adjudicated guilty for the misdemeanor one, and then the felony one was transferred to county court. Court action. That that's what it says right there. See how it says court action right there? And let me slide it over so you can see. The court action, there was no court action taken for the original documentation of the kidnapping. And you're looking right at it. So what according to the clerk of the court in Duval County, according to the clerk of the court's records, I was arrested twice on 12-3-1997 for soliciting for prostitution. And you're looking at it right here. Right there. They rewrote the arrest and booking report because it's impossible to be arrested twice on the same day for soliciting for prostitution. So what, I guess I called up the sting twice? I don't think so. Okay? They rewrite the arrest and booking report. And then what they do is they say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna transfer it to county court is what we're gonna do. Because remember, I'm not there to say anything. I'm not there to contest it because they've told me that all charges have been dropped. But you put the you file the numbers into into the the beast. The beast demands that um, um, the beast demands that a, that an outcome be done. And let's not forget, I know exactly what happened. I know I've never seen an attorney. I know that no one's told told me anything. Uh, I know that I've paid a bond company two thousand five hundred dollars. Let's just add them to it. They're on. They re, they re kidnapped me. Okay. So uh, I know if if at any and the clock has yet to start on any of this because the crimes have not been reported yet. Okay. So, uh, uh, what they do is, remember how I told you all to remember 9-7? Okay? Watch this. Watch this. What they do is they, 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 they say, okay, here we go. We are going to uh, transfer this to county court. 9-7, and this is the, do this is the, uh, the docket number is the arrest and booking report number, 9-7. Don't ask me why the zero isn't in here, but the zero isn't isn't listed. But that's the that's the arrest and booking report number. And who does this? Bram Scharf. Bram Scharf was the state attorney that that uh, was that walked in the courtroom with uh, Mr. Charles Coffer. He stopped being a state attorney. Charles Coffer started being an attorney of any kind. So did so did Bram Scharf on 12-15-1997. But who signs this? Why, look, Mr. Terrence Martin. Terrence Martin signs this. Terrence Martin, you stop being, and this is dated supposedly January 5th. Okay? But then what they do is they take it, and again, here it is. Terrence Martin. You know, this Terrence Martin that made the plea deal with one Donald Smith that released Donald Smith. Look at that, light bulb's coming on. Okay? Well, we're closing in on an hour on this video, so we're just going to stop right there on this one. Okay? I can't do anything. No one individual can do anything about this. Who can? We the people. You want me to stop talking about this? Trust me, I want to stop talking about this. I want to stop living under this. My life has been stolen from me. And don't even get, we're going to get into the three Thornton women as well as Cherish Periwinkle. Cherish Periwinkle should have never, ever, ever been kidnapped, raped, and murdered on June 13th, 2013. 
the three Thornton women, Mama Thornton, Daughter Thornton, and Grandma Thornton, should not to this day believe that it's their fault that Cherish Perry was kidnapped, raped, and murdered because Terrence Martin stopped being a state attorney. And now it's coming out. Now you understand why I'm saying this. Somebody's got to stand up to the bullies. I'm standing up to the bullies. And now you're understanding why this is there. I'm not mad at you. But look, I've been reporting these crimes for a long time. I've been working on this since 2013. May 2nd, 2013. I'm still standing here. So that removes all of this. They're going to come take you out. They've had 21 year, over 21 years to take me out. I'm still standing right here. You stand up to the bully. You stand up to the bully, and the bully backs down and runs. All they can do is bully. All they can do is threaten. And law enforcement, godly authorities do not threaten. Ministers of God do not threaten. Law enforcement officers enforce the law. So says their title. Judges enforce the law. That's their title. State prosecutors prosecute crimes. They don't commit them. My situation is over and done with. You want to do something? Pick up the phone. Demand that our laws be enforced. You want to do something about Washington? Same thing. Stop dealing with the stupid little people in the stupid little box. Stop dealing with the stick people. You deal with everyone who's taking an oath. I have. I'm still standing right here. The only way to get me to shut up, I'll shut up two ways. One, you're going to have to kill me. And guess what, criminals? You can't do that. Because I'm a child of Almighty God. Two, I will shut up as soon as this is resolved. As soon as I am duly compensated for the 21 years of my life that have been stolen from me. You all did this to avoid a little bit of money. Now you all owe me a huge amount of money. So says the law. You all, it could have stopped with just one night. One night of me being dealt with. But it ended up, look at all the destruction that you all have caused. The Thornton family, the Periwinkle family. I'm gonna include Donald Smith, because y'all this y'all it's y'all's fault that Donald Smith kidnapped, raped, and murdered, and that's what's got him scared. It's called culpable negligence. They unleashed Donald Smith. Instead of giving Donald Smith help. Instead of locking him up to make sure if they would have done their job. The three Thornton women wouldn't be feeling guilt. They wouldn't be destroyed. The Periwinkle family wouldn't be destroyed. And you know what? Eight-year-old Cherish Periwinkle would still be alive today. No. Now you're starting to understand that it's much more than just about me. It's just much more than just about a job. No. Just as James chapter 4, verse 17 says... Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna coerce me. You ain't gonna threaten me to sin. I will not bow. It's called standing in the gap. Nothing has happened to me, and I will not shut up. I will not stop reporting these crimes until it is resolved. Until the law is applied and these threats are removed. The only question that you have to ask is, what exactly are you going to do? Just saying.